Hi, I'm Espen Croft. Thank you so much for watching. Today we're going to do another composing chords melody style video in, uh, in an 80s fashion. We're going to put some chords together, uh, sevens, nines, etc., to sort of uh, try and go into that same area as those new wave romantics bands did in the early and mid 80s, like Spandau Ballet, ABC, Duran Duran. Uh, Tears for Fears, etc., and try to break out of those uh, very simple chords. We're going to add a little bit of sophistication to those, and I'm going to show you some of the techniques I use to uh, make that happen. And what we're basically are going to do is use this chord progression. A very standard C, A minor, F, G. Very common, very much used, and in itself, especially when I play it like this, pretty boring as well. So we're going to use some tricks and see if we can make those chords a little bit more evocative, emotional, and uh, nostalgic sounding and see if we can add a nice melody on top. All right? So, let's play those again. Okay, so right there, I have a little thing going. C, A minor, but now, keep the A minor in my right hand, but I do the F bass, and that makes it an F major 7 chord instead. And already there we have a little bit of um, romantics going. But we're going to take it a step further. So let's check out that C chord again. And now we do a... Uh, I'm still doing the A uh, bass, but I'm doing an E minor instead of the A minor with my right hand. So C... E minor. If I'd been doing the C bass all along, it would have been a C major 7, but I'm still doing that A bass because I'm going downwards with that bass. So F major 7 and back to G. But that G uh, is too familiar as well, too boring if you want to. So let's do another trick. Let's instead do... And now instead of the G, we do this. So I'm basically doing an F minor. I'm holding that F bass, doing an F minor and adding again that E note. So that makes it sort of an F minor 7, major 7, all at once depending on how we want to see it. But I still want part of that G feeling, so instead of doing that F bass, I'm gonna do a D bass when I come to that originally G chord. Okay, so from, so from the top. So that F minor 7, major 7, with that D bass, is now really a D diminished 9th chord. Okay, so now we have a chord progression going, which I'm going to use when I'm going to add the melody. So we have...
right? So that's more sophisticated already and exactly how I want it to be. Boring? Much better and very 80s in its voicing. Okay, so that will be the um, foundation of the verse in the song. So what can we add on top of this? Well, if you watched some of my videos before or followed me in comment section and stuff like that, uh, I've made it clear, sort of, that I always write the music, the song, with lyrics and melody and chords before I go on to the arrangement and build up that song in a production. So what I'm going to do now is try to add a melody and some lyrics, but the lyrics, they might be changed later on because now in this phase, I'm mostly concerned about how the vowel sounds are coming across. I'm very obsessed with how the vowel sounds uh, sound because I have a mental picture on, uh, on emotion and tension and vowel sounds are a big part of that to me personally. So uh, if the lyrics I come up with now don't make much sense, uh, that's only natural because um, I'm really at this stage only doing mock words. And sometimes those mock words stay on uh, and become part of the final arrangement, the final production as well. That's not uncommon. If you take a, a song like The Riddle uh, by Nick Kershaw, that whole lyrics, all that lyrics, are basically just mock words he did while writing the song. He planned to, to change those, to, uh, to, to get rid of those and add new, more um, better words later. I, I've read an interview with him saying this. But uh, sometimes you go, uh, you get so attached to uh, the sound of the words you have, even at a mock uh, stage. So you can't, you can't ditch them really. And so this might happen with this as well. Uh, in about fifty percent of all my songs, I stay with the mock words throughout. So maybe I'll do this here as well. But I don't plan on doing either way uh, at this stage. I just make up words and vowel sounds uh, as I see fit while I'm going. So let's uh, check it out. That E note is very special to me. Uh, so I'm going to start with that. Okay. Okay, so what we're gonna do is this. How could I know and realize even before you'd go? Okay, that's a good line in my view. I, I do this all on instinct. I always compose on instinct, I think most composers do. Uh, so there's no bigger scheme at work here. I don't think in, in music theory. I think what sounds good, what sounds emotional, what brings some tension, what makes me happy, what brings out all the nostalgia. Remember, I live for nostalgia. I have no intention of making futuristic music. I want to go back to the 80s and stay there. Okay, one more time. How could I know and realize even before you'd go? I waited for the show. I cannot explain the reasoning between the both. Okay, I did something new there. Uh, check this out. This is what I did the first round. The second round, I did this. I just took a G 
chord and still holding that A bass. So that might be considered a, an A7 chord. Okay, from the top. How could I know and realize even before you'd go? I waited for the show. I cannot explain the line between the pleasure and the pain. I'm torn between the lanes. And I know. Okay, so we basically have our verses now one verse or two verses, depending on how you see it. I know. Okay, so we go back to that C. Uh, so now I need a little uh, bridge, a sort of pre-chorus, because these are the verses I end on the C, right where I started. Uh, and this has taken a while uh, in this slow tempo. I might turn up the tempo in the final arrangement then. Uh, let's see how that goes. So now we're going to do um, something else for that bridge or pre-chorus. Um, but I want to stick to uh, doing sevenths or ninths. And I know I waited for you. Okay, that works. Uh, that's too major seventh chords in a row and I know I waited for you so that's E flat major seven and A flat major seven and I know I waited for you. Okay, so we had that E flat major seven, A flat major seven, which is a modulation in itself from that um, A minor key. I was doing this in uh, originally in the verses. And I waited for you. Okay, so we go back to C again. That will be modulating back to where we started. I could do that as well. I could go through B flat. And I waited for you. So going back to a C major, that sort of gives that a uh, triumphant feel. Okay, so now we have to do uh, the chorus and we're going to start with another chord that's important now. Uh, we should do uh, a follow-up to that lift-off feeling we get at the end of the pre-chorus. So, um, no, okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going uh, to that F major. Okay. Okay. 
OK. F chord. And we're going to do start the melody on that A. And we're going to go down to that D because it creates the tension. So what I'm going to do is um, singing Hey Boy or Hey Girl or something else. Let's see. Uh, while I'm holding that F chord. Hey boy. Hey boy. Hey boy. I'm going to do some pedaling. Um, holding that root bass note while I'm changing the chord in my right hand. So I'm doing an F chord and a G chord, but I'm holding that F chord. Hey boy, make that call. And I'm going down uh, to the E with the bass, but I'm doing a straight C chord with my right hand. Hey boy, make that call. C with the E bass and standard E, A minor. Hey boy, make that call. And hey girl, what you're waiting for. But I think I'm gonna hold this chord here because if I go back to A minor now, it will just be uh, another repeat and uh, it will be kind of stale, boring as well. Uh, the word boring is used a lot here. I, I'll, I'll try to avoid the boring stuff. Hey boy, make that call. And hey girl, what you're waiting for. And I'll go... Okay, so I'll modulate uh, the same way as I did in the pre-chorus to an E-flat, but now I'm not going to do the, um, the major 7. I'm going to do a, uh, a standard E-flat chord. Hey girl, what you waiting for? Holding that creates tension. What are you waiting for? I'm probably going to keep that uh, line of lyrics because uh, with that chord just holding there, uh, everyone will be expecting her to do something or him or whatever. Maybe it's an animal, uh, a turtle waiting to uh, race the, um, the rabbit. Uh, anyway, uh, wandering off here. Uh, hey girl, what you're waiting for? Hesitation. Or dedication. Okay, it's with G sus4. G sus4, G. That would be perfect, a perfect way of going back to that C in the verses again, okay? Hey girl, what you're waiting for? Hesitation, dedication. Make that call.
Okay, I think we have verses, pre-chorus, and chorus. Not bad in um, a little more over half an hour. Uh, and I had to explain it as well, so I probably can have done it in 10 minutes, working all alone. But it's nice to have you with me. I'm not sure how many are still following after this time. Uh, I'm probably not having... Uh, please say so in the comment section if you're still with me at this point in the video. I'd like to know. Because if no one's with me uh, now, uh, there's not much point in doing videos like this so long. So uh, I'd appreciate if you're telling me if you're still with me at this point. Okay, so let's try to do the song from the top then. Uh, I might not remember all the words exactly. They might change up from uh, round to round, but let's go. Let's uh, try it on. Um. How could I know and realize even before you'd go? I waited for the show. I cannot explain the line between the pleasure and the pain I'm torn between the lanes And I know I waited for you So hey boy, make that call Hey girl, what you're waiting for? Hesitation or dedication that call Okay, so I just uh, tried a little bit of uh intro there okay so I'm gonna leave that part for the next episode where I'm doing the arrangement so basically now we have uh, a song written partially we have a verse three chorus and a chorus. Uh, I might want to add a bridge uh, before the last choruses. This is a standard three-minute pop song, mind you. We're not uh, splitting the atom here. So this will be pretty schematic and uh, commercial-driven. Uh, that's the way I want it, and that's the thing I do. So... Um, I might add a bridge later on, modulate some more perhaps, and we're going to add a intro uh, section of course, and uh, that intro part uh, might even come again after the first uh, chorus, before the, the second verse, etc. You know how pop songs are. So uh, this will be fun. The lyrics, again, uh, not to be taken too seriously at this point. I'm just making up words on instinct that feels right, that flows with the chords and the rhythm of the, the composition. So um, I hope you enjoyed it. And um, I probably refine some of it, some of it uh, in the coming week. And I'll get back to you with that second episode where we uh, shape this into a song with bass, drums, synths, etc. And try to make it a uh, nice, emotional, uh, chord-driven, melody-driven pop song in an 80s new romantic style. So uh, I'll see you in the next episode. Cheers.